Matthew chapter 22. Now, before we go into Matthew 22, that wasn't an earthquake, that was me moving my desk. we got to realize what we talked about earlier. We talked about the parable of the vineyard of Israel and the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees. They knew that parable was about them. It's about the Old Testament and the treatment, Hebrews 11, of the prophets and the men that God sent. How they killed them. They frustrated them. Jeremiah was ready to give up. Jeremiah was put in prison. All the things they done to him. We must keep that <clears throat> into effect when we go into chapter 22. Because chapter 22, we're going to read it. And I'm going to reveal something to you. I'm going to reveal to you the danger of your lay the scene Baptist church running to Matthew for doctrine and scripture. You have more better chances of Mark, Luke, and John running to Matthew. Matthew is for the nation of Israel, a Jewish king. And Jesus answers back unto them, Again, by parables, and said, "No, it says parables. What you know? Wait a minute. This is one parable. What did John say? If John said, if we were to record everything that was said and done and all the things, you would need you would need tractor trailers. You would need those those container ships. You would need railroad and airplanes. To, it'd be like okay." Open up your airplane flight 597 to the third row, fifth, I mean, you, you, don't think that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the entire life of Jesus Christ. It's not. And when we get to heaven, I don't know, but it'd be interesting to find out everything that did happen. That's why it's plurals. Plural. The kingdom of heaven, okay, birdies fly, trees grow, people walk, millennium, millennium, Jesus is king of kings, lord of lords, Israel is in their nation, they have no enemies, okay, that's the kingdom of heaven. It's like unto a certain king, which would be God. Certain king, which planted a vineyard, okay, this goes one in one. That's chapter 21. Which made a marriage for his son, Jesus Christ. There it is. There's a marriage of the Son of God. God puts forth. In the Old Testament, unlike America and the Gentile, when there was going to be a marriage, they would make the feast, the reception, before the marriage. Because you know what the marriage is in the Bible, though many preachers disagree with us, I don't care. Because scripture allows the fact is, it's when flesh joins flesh, that's the marriage. It's not a license. The Bible says, and not to the exact fact, per, per quote, it says, Isaac took Rebekah into his mother's tent, and she became his wife. How did she become his wife? I'm going to be clean. I'm not going to say how. But they joined together. Jacob says, okay, it's time for me, for, for Rachel and I. I did my seven years and, and, and laving through, through a feast and everybody to get together. Jacob was in the tent. Pitch dark, evidently. And Leah was brought into him. You, say, you said Rachel. No, Leah. And because of that episode in the tent, they became husband and wife. It, it wasn't that, oh, I mean, no, no, the marriage license said Rachel. No, 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 no. Sent forth his servants. Who are the servants in 21? The vineyard, the prophets, the men of God, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of them. To call them that were bidden to the wedding. Okay, so here's a king God, here's a son Jesus Christ, here's a wedding with the, with the prophets and all the men of God called out to the nation of Israel. 
oh, 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 okay. You say Christians in the church, even though there's no death, burial, and resurrection. All right. We'll go both avenues, okay? There's a marriage. Israel is being invited by the prophets and the men of God. Jeremiah, Isaiah, and all that. The church, there's, there's a wedding, and God and the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Christians are being called forth by, no, well, wait a minute. The lost people are being called out by Christians. Okay, we'll look at it both avenues. How's this? So we're going to go, we're the white people to the wedding. Okay, we'll take it out. Except we're called that we're bidding to the wedding. Well, the lost are not really bidding, but, okay, for God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. And they would not come. Okay, so, all through Jeremiah, take Jeremiah. You know, Jeremiah never had a convert into, into Daniel. All right, we'll take Jeremiah. No one agreed with, with Jeremiah, but Barak and the Ethiopian unit. No one. The church. Let's take the church. They would not come. Are you telling nobody got saved? I got a guy on Facebook every week. Fourteen people got saved. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> okay, right, sure. How many times I want to friend, unfriend this guy, but uh, okay, I just, I'll take the comical. And he posted something yesterday or today. You know, if you don't have people getting saved in your church every week, and I'm like, oh, I don't know where you're living, buddy. <laughs> but, okay. I'm being nice. He sent forth other servants. Isaiah. Becca. Zephaniah. Zechariah. Malachi. Who would it be the other servants in the church? Is there a class of people in the church that are other servants? I mean, we are all to preach the gospel, Mark. Though you don't go running to Mark. All right, other servants in the church. All right, some preach their church, some preach their pastor, some. Okay, okay, we'll take that. Invite them to church. Come here, my pastor. Come here, the visiting preacher. Come. Hey, we're having fried chicken at ours. At church, we have, we have lasagna and, and pasta. Well, in our church, we got more. Okay, so we'll take those as the servants to bring them to God. And tell them, which are bidden, invited, come. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. So every Baptist now, ho oh, oh, food, 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 hallelujah for food, hallelujah for food. Actually, really, you know, I don't read anywhere in New Jerusalem where you're eating food. There's a tree of life that provides leaves for, for medical purposes. But again, that's Israel and maybe the nations, if not Israel. But my oxen, there's your beef, and my fatlings are killed. No pork. <laughs> that means would be, a definition would be that big, plump turkey has been eaten all year long and now we come to November. That's what that, they're, they're purposely fed for dinner. Notice it said the kingdom of heaven, okay? There's your oxen, there's your fatlings. There are no oxen in heaven or New Jerusalem, my friend. When they had the oxen and the fat leaves and the doves in the temple of God, Jesus made a cord of whip of them and drove them all out. All things are ready. Okay. The church age, all things are ready. Then why aren't we in heaven? You tell me that God has hamburger and, 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 and chicken and they're all up in heaven right now and just ready for us to go and has it spoiled? Come on to my marriage. Okay. So Israel, come to the marriage. Christians, 
Come. You don't, you don't tell them come to the... Have you ever told... Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and come to the marriage. Have you told them that? You don't tell them that. You told them the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Now, can I make a point here? We who are saved are the bride of Jesus Christ, the groom. When was the last time you ever said to a bride, come to the marriage? It's self-evident. Because if there is no bride, there is no wedding. We'll keep reading. But they made light of it. One went their ways. One went to his farm. Another went to his merchant. Another pair, another uh, uh, gospel tells one guy, well, you know, I bought a, a couple of yoke of oxen. I got to go prove them afterwards. <laughs> Well, I went, some, I went and bought some land. I got to go see it afterwards. And I went, well, I, you know, I, I just got married. My wife, well, she would love to go to a wedding. Matthew left those out. Because Matthew focuses on God and the son and the wedding. Not the excuses. And the raiment took his servants. Okay, here we go. And then treated them spitefully and slew them. Okay, book of Acts. The Roman Catholic Church, church history. I'll give you that one. I'll give you Old Testament history. Remember, keep in the back of your mind Matthew 21. And if you have not heard Matthew 21, go get Matthew 21, the, the, the vineyard, and rehearse. Matthew 21 has been about Israel, Isaiah, the vineyard. And the Old Testament prophets were slain and killed. We went to, we won't do it, but we went to Hebrews 11. And we saw everything they did to the prophets, to the, okay, we can apply Matthew 22, 6 to the church. We will do it self-evident. We'll, we'll give it to you. And there's a purpose why I am giving you this giving. And you're not going to like it if you're in a church. But when the king heard of it, they're up. Okay, let me ask you something. 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 Ex I'm trying to think of the word. Again. Since Pentecost, and I believe the church began at Pentecost. When has there been a king involved with the church? Okay, okay you say Jesus is king perfectly well. Okay, he's king. Even though he's our husband, our groom. Okay, yeah, okay. Kingdom England. And kings in America never had a king, so you can leave America out. <laughs> well, don't switch now. Stay on the boat and throw the tea overboard. We're going to have a tea party, even though you drink coffee. You got it all backwards. All right, the king was wrong. Who is the king? 21 and 22? God. He's angry. Whoso has the Son has everlasting life. Whoso has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide upon him. Can I ask you a question? Who was John the Baptist preaching to? He's preaching to Jews. Do, do, do. He was wroth. And he sent forth his armies. Now we're going to get into a little history. I wish I had one of them drum sets. I could probably buy it. Now. He destroyed those murderers. There's one particular person of murder that he will destroy them of. And it hasn't happened in Matthew 22 yet. The ones who will say, crucify him, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. And burnt up their city. That happened in Daniel's time. Last king, Caniah, I believe. Jeconiah. But God dropped the J-E. J-E. I don't want you to have any reference. Caniah. Babylon came in the third time, sacked and burnt up the city. There it is. See it? 
most of the history has been of Israel. They have, they have, they have killed, murdered, slain, and mistreated the prophets. Okay, they have murdered, they killed, they mistreated, they forsook the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Seventy A.D. Titus comes in and destroys the whole city. Okay, okay, okay. Baptist Church. Christians, pastors. What city of the church would God be angry with and send his armies and burn it up? Come on, say it. The only, the only, the only city that would be a reference to the church would be Rome. Friend, I'm not of Rome. Now, you may be Baptist, Catholic, Catholic, Baptist. I am not. I forsook that teaching. I forsook Easter. I forsook Esther. I forsook Christmas. I have forsook Tammuz. I don't have little golden idols and look at our altar that now called the stage and look at the greatest preacher that we have. Then look at the altar where God meets us in the house of... I left that. My city is the city called New Jerusalem. And that hasn't come down yet. You can't say, oh, there's a Christian, because there is no city associated with the church. But the Baptists, can I pick on the Baptists? Because they ought to know better. They're Baptists. We're going to have a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And we're going to walk the, the, the places that Jesus walked. You can't. Because Jewish people on their holidays has to clean everything. They sweep everything clean. <laughs> You're not going to walk the dirt that Jesus walked. Well, the Catholics say we go over here. That, that's Catholic. That's not Bible. And the Arabians come over. That's Arabian. That's not Bible. And if they do have a Bible, it ain't going to be King James. I don't know what the Bible foundation is of that that ark in America. But we'll keep on going. So it, it can't be church because the church does not have a particular city. The particular city was mentioned in 21 and in Isaiah. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Okay. I'm in 23. Isaiah 5, 1 through 7, when it talks about that vineyard, is Jerusalem and the people are Israel. And I'm sorry to say, Baptist. When we come back, those that, that do come back, and those that get cities, you're going to rule in not America. You're going to rule in the land of Israel, divided into 13 places. What do you mean 13? you got the 12 tribes of Israel, and you got the Levites. We'll keep reading. Then saith he to his servants, All right, so he's already destroyed Jerusalem, Babylon, right? Right? Right. Third time Nebuchadnezzar comes in. He says to his servants, Would there be any servants after the destruction of Babylon? Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo, Daniel, Zechariah. Uh, Zephaniah, they're, they're rebuilding the temple. Okay, how about after 70 AD? There are Christians from Antioch going out preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to Gentiles and Jews. The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. All the Jews that rejected God, rejected the law, rejected the prophets. Go ye therefore to the highways. Okay, we can do that with Christians. 
We can do that. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in to the house of sin. Excuse me, sorry. We're not told to bring them in. We're told to go and preach the gospel. All right, so go. Okay, there we go. Okay, there's Matthew. I mean, there's Mark. And as many shall find... All right, Mark 16, my commission verse, Mark 16, we're going to look at two verses here, Ready? Mark 16, 15, go ye, that's Jesus, red letters, go ye all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, how's that, look at it, see that, see that, see that, Acts, Acts 16, Acts 16, 31. Well, we'll do third. Here's a Philippian judge. They brought him out and said, Sirs, respectfully, what must I do to be saved? That's a great question. Anybody ever ask you a question? Ooh, you got a good day in the Lord. And they said, Well, come to the wedding, and thou shalt eat and be full of food. The king requests you. Holy, holy, full of baloney. Well, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know a man, probably in hell today, one brother said, come to, come to Jesus, get saved, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, hear this message of salvation. Another brother, come to our church and have a fellowship. You know, you know I got to say something, said the man, that church and their food was good. <laughs> what about the other son? My son's a my son's a preacher. My son preaches. My son goes into jail. He preaches, preaches to both people. Paul or Silas said, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house." Back to Matthew. What did Matthew say? Go in the highways, as many as shall find. Okay, not everybody's going to be saved. Look at that. Matthew says not everybody's going to be saved. Bid to the marriage. Do you invite them into the marriage? No, you don't. If you do, you're doing it wrong. Let me tell you something right now. Let's take a little break here. We'll take a little message advertisement break. Okay? The church is the bride of Jesus Christ. The Jews are invited to the wedding of Jesus and the church or the bride. So when you come to those virgins, that's not the church. So the, those servants went out in the highways, bring them in, bring them in, and gathered together all as many as they found. Well, okay. He filled the church Sunday morning. Both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You invited them from the highways. You brought them in. There is no means of salvation. There they are, good and bad. And the wedding is full. But no one is saved. All are welcome here. There's a church. I'm sorry to say, I'm not good, I'm not bad. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And when the king came, okay, when the king came, God comes. And Jesus Christ, who is God, and God is Jesus Christ, second advent, is the second advent, 2211. To see the guest, not the bride. 
You know, the Baptist church today has a lot of guests, but they don't have a lot of brides. Those guests, if the rapture were happen during that service, those guests would stay. The bride would go. All right, let's keep on going. We got Israel on one hand. We got the church on the other hand. You ready for the flop? There was a man which had not a wedding garment. Now you didn't, the, the symbolic of that you belong into a Jewish wedding was there was a garment. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is. But I know it's a wedding garment. And they look around and you got the garment, you got the garment. You ain't got the garment. Now let me ask you, is it not, hold on, when the king came to see the guest and saw that there was a man which had not the blood of Jesus Christ, is that what it says? It doesn't say that, does it? I'm not saved because I have a wedding garment. I don't have a wedding garment. I have a wedding gown. My salvation is not a garment. My salvation is the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, there's some churches, they let's say, for instance, we're in Daytona Beach. Let's say, for instance, a woman came off the street, came into the church, and the most filthy bikini she could wear. I'll be, let's say she had the most limited bra, whatever you call the bikini top, and let's say she had a thong. That's disgusting, isn't it? Let's say she come in and she's searching for God. You know there have been some churches that would boot her out the door. I heard of one church that had a woman like that, and they, they gave her something to cover her up. A little decency. I mean, maybe a little, but if a woman like came in like that, something like that, or you take this day, let's say a guy came in dressed up like a woman. You know, he, they would throw him out. Would you? I don't think so. Maybe the old style he would, but not am growing grace. Here, the, the invitation, the, the wedding, the meal, is you don't have a garment. That's right. So if you're going to apply Matthew to a Christian, you're telling me that you could be thrown out, with the next verse but right now, you could be thrown out because you're not wearing the right clothes? Let's say a Roman Catholic priest, he's got his collar on backwards, his fruit of the loom touching his neck. Let's say that moment he bows his head and says, you know, Jesus... I have been wrong all these years. I've put my faith in you and only you outside the church. It's only by you, Jesus Christ. And the rapture happens. Wait a minute. You, you, you got the Roman Catholic garb. You can't come. Really? Really? Well, listen, Styler. You can't come up. To, you can't come up in the rapture. You don't have a tie. I got plenty of them. Just don't wear them, Lord. You know there are some Baptist churches that are like that? But that's not Jesus. That's the Jews. That's Israel. That's Matthew. I don't think Paul is a Roman person and had very good attire to wear. Matter of fact, he says one a couple times he was absolutely naked. And then they try to hide the Bible. You know, that's, naked doesn't really mean naked, but naked to be naked. And God made Adam and Eve. They brought them together. They were naked. They were not ashamed. Because they don't want to... Peter was in the boat naked. <laughs> Evidently, you've never hanged around with fishermen before. <laughs> but... You see, I'm trying to get to you. We're going to change the Bible. The Baptist Church in 13. Then said the king to his servants, bind him hand and foot. What? Because he ain't got the garment? The Baptist Church. Not, not Matthew. The Baptist Church. Yes, some Baptist churches would. Doctrinally, 
Matthew 21, Matthew 22, the entire book of Matthew is written to Jews. He's got the wrong garment. Never mind, there's no blood, because there's been no death, burial, and resurrection yet. By the hand and foot, take him away. Some would do that in a Baptist church. But doctrinally, under the works of the law in the kingdom of heaven and the millennium. If you don't do right, if you don't act right, you don't look right, law, works, you don't go to heaven. There's the temple, there's the priest, there is the sacrifices, there is the law in the millennium. Not the church. Okay, now ready? Here we go. Here we go. For many are called, but few are chosen. You, you, you said you for, I, I know I forgot something. I'm going to say something. For many are called, but few. That can be Israel. That can be the church. Plenty of gospel tracts out. Plenty of door knocking. Plenty of dealing with people one on one with open Bible. Plenty of street preaching. There's plenty of ways of witnessing. There's plenty of Facebook messages out there. there Okay? That verse right there is universal say, not everybody gets saved. Now, back to 13. Cast them in our darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I had sat under a Sunday school teacher in Oak Hill, Florida, well, gnashing and weeping the teeth is not hell. Why would something somebody say that? Well, we'll go to that from other men. Because if you say weeping and gnashing the teeth is hell, then your whole I, uh, object of opportunity in Matthew 22 is Christians can go to hell. You see, we taught Matthew 22, 1 to 13, that that's the church. We get down to the very last thing of 13. Oh, my God, Christians can go to hell and lose it. We don't believe that as Baptists. So how do we override that? Well, we've been a national team. That's not hell. That's a Baptist purgatory. And as my mom told me the other day after reading the Bible, she said, come out of the Catholic Church like I did. I don't find purgatory in the Bible. Neither do I find a Baptist purgatory. There's your Baptist purgatory because verses 1 to 13 is the Christian, the church, and the end of 13, oh God, Christians can't go to hell. So we'll just say that's not hell. Where is it then? And you say, well, sorry, what's the silence? I'm trying to remember the fool's name because I was going to give it. He stood up that podium, taught the Sunday school, oh, yeah, we've been in natural truth, that's not really hell. Well, guess who went to meet him after the Sunday school lesson and gave him the weeping and gnashing of teeth and darkness and showed him the scriptures of hell? Well, that's what men told me. Well, your men that taught you is wrong. You taught the class wrong. And not once and every time that I bring you up quietly, where Matthew said, deal with him one on one. Not once did you get up in the next class and say, oh, I was wrong. You just kept on teaching your foolishness. That is not the church. You can't even spiritually apply that to the church. Because you got a big problem with 13. If you if you put that to the church, you got Christians who can lose it and go to hell. And I wouldn't want to be in your shoes teaching that. And I'm not going to be in your shoes because I don't teach that. For many are called, but few are chosen. And what's the reaction? Then when the Pharisees, do you have do you have a literal title? Now say there are people who act like Pharisees. Do you have a literal title and people in the church, actual 
who are Pharisees, to counsel how they might entangle him in his talks. The Pharisees understood exactly what Jesus said, not the Baptists. Pharisees are Jewish, are Jewish, are Jewish, are Israel, are Israel, are Israel, are Hebrews, are Hebrews, are Hebrews, religion. 22, 1 to 14 was written to Israel, Hebrew, Jews. But there are Baptists out there, ones in the book of Hebrews say, that's Christian. No, there were Christian Jews written to. So, already, verse 15, we'll do, we'll do it again. They rejected the king, God, because we want to entangle him. In this. You've been entangled in this talk all along. It's this rejection of what God said. 